Good morning. My name is Jennifer and this morning I'm going to make a black pepper Parmesan cheese. This is not Parmesan cheese though. Parmesan comes from Parm, Parma, Italy and I am not in Parma, Italy so it cannot be Parmesan. One I've already made and tried was 11 months old and it is fantastic. We love it, cannot get enough of it so I'm going to do another one. You could probably eat it earlier, you could eat it later. It's just a basic harder cheese. It's not even that hard, it's more of a creamy, I don't know, it was fantastic. I'm using full fat Jersey milk, about seven gallons, maybe a little bit more. I could skim it if I wanted to. I just know that when I remove oh, shoot. too much of the cream, I get a smaller yield of cheese and I want the time I put into making cheese to be worth it. So I just keep the cream in, heating it to 90 degrees on high heat. This will take about, oh, 20 minutes maybe. The milk is to 90 degrees, so I'm gonna turn it off now. You need a thermophilic culture to make Parmesan cheese. Last time I did it, I used yogurt to culture. That's what I use for all my thermophilic cheeses. But now that I'm making clabber, I use clabber to do it. This clabber has been going for months now and it is lovely. It smells like butter. This is probably about one and three quarter cups right here. You can see all the cream on top of it. It is lovely and jiggly and delicious. I shake this up really good and I'm going to add it to the milk to let it culture. You can use clabber culture for mesophilic or thermophilic cheeses. About one quarter cup of clabber per gallon of milk. My thinking behind making this black pepper parm is that often I am adding black pepper and parmesan to the same recipe. So why not just add the black pepper to the parm ahead of time so that I kill two birds with one stone. For the rennet, it's one and a half teaspoons diluted in a little bit of cool water and then you stir it into the milk, only stirring for 30 to 45 seconds because the rennet will start to set up and you don't want to stir while it is setting up. It looks pretty good, but it's a little bit slumpy. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes. Yeah, that feels better now. Not quite as slumpy. So I'm gonna cut these up with a whisk. Over the course of the next 25 minutes, I'm going to stir these curds and bring them up to 100 degrees. I'll cut up large pieces as I go. You wanna go slow in the beginning because the curds are still fragile. So right now the curds are pretty soft. It doesn't feel like there's much in here. They've all broken down and they just kind of feel like I'm pushing sand around or something. There's not much there, but it's there. These are still pretty wet, but there's not really big ones. They're not very rubbery, they're still tender. Now I'm gonna raise this to 120 over the course of the next 40 minutes or so. So I just keep going and I will turn the heat up as needed if it's not going fast enough. I'm about halfway through. It is getting too hot for me to stir with my hand. Right around 110 degrees is the max of being comfortable. So let's see if I'm close to 110, right around 107. The recipe said, that at this point I could be stirring it just once every three minutes. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take my hand out and I'm just gonna come back in and stir it. We'll go till about 120 degrees or until it's pretty firm and the curds are boingy. You can see that they're starting to like kind of clump together on the bottom. That's why you wanna do it every two to three minutes, no longer than that, because it will start to knit together. Two options for the black pepper. You can either measure it out, put it in a kettle and add water and then simmer it for about 10 minutes or so, then let it cool before you start making the cheese because then you take that liquid and you add it to the milk and then you add the peppers later at the end when you're putting it into the press. That way you get more of the flavor that you've gotten out. The reason for boiling the seeds ahead of time is that you are killing any contaminants that might be in them. I'm not gonna do that because I've done whole peppercorns before and it was fine, did not bother the cheese. Secondly, I forgot. so. We're just going to crush up a quarter cup of peppercorns. Some of the pieces we will leave bigger. In the cheese, they soften. There's not like you're gonna break your teeth on them. There's a little bit of a crunch, but it's not like a rock. So you can leave some whole ones in and then you can crush them up more so you get more of that pepperiness through, but you just kind of want a cracked black peppercorn look. When I'm doing high temperature cheeses like this, I take the cheesecloth and I spray it down with vinegar because high temperature cheeses tend to stick to the cloth more easily than lower temperature cheeses. This is 50% water, 50% vinegar. Just hit it real good and then wring it out. And now it should help to keep it from sticking too badly to the cloth. I'm not using my wire mesh sides today because a higher temp cheese like this, smaller curds, 
is more compact, makes a smaller cheese, don't really need it. Now here's the thing I'm always unsure about. It says to take it up to 124 degrees, I think, for a parm. My curds feel done way ahead of time and I don't wanna cook it so much so that all the moisture comes out and it's just dry, yucky cheese. I kind of find the in-between with raising it pretty high and making sure they're really boingy. Yeah, right, right around 115. So I kind of want to go another five degrees, but let's see what this feels like. They look pretty ind individual. They are kind of, you hear? They're boingy. And look how they mat just like that and they start matting together. So I'm squeezing it and then they do that and they crumble back up. I think they're pretty close. As long as I stir every two or three minutes, it's doing pretty good. All right, we're at 118. Let's see what these curds are like. Looking good. Squeezing them. They're matting together. I think they're done. I don't really feel like cooking them anymore. I'm gonna turn this off and let them rest here for five minutes so that the curds settle and we can pour off the way. Yeah, just pour. You can tilt it more. Okay, stop. Let's get another. delicious. All right, let's get these in the press. So you can see I have a little bit too much pepper right there. It got all piled up at the bottom. I'm going to just kind of crunch that in a little bit so it looks a little bit more even. I'm going to press this at fairly light pressure, about 30, 20, 30 pounds for the first half hour, and then we'll flip and go from there. <laughs> and those are scene changes. Okay. It makes it really cool. Okay. Seven pounds, five ounces. Parmesan is getting nice and hard and dry. So it's getting its nice rind, so I'm gonna flip it. It feels a little bit soft on the side, a little bit, not wet, just not quite as dry. So I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. Let's dry all over, looks good. This will be ready next summer, about a year from now. So I'll just pop it down in the cheese cave and flip it every week or so for the next year. Yum, yum. I think I'm going to go ahead, whew, fly, get out of there, and taste the black pepper parm I made in June. Six months, I think, is good enough. I just want to know how it is, how it's aging, especially with all that black pepper in there. I recently had a black pepper parm from another time, and I felt like the peppers were getting a little bit, astringent isn't the right word, but like there's a sharpness to them that concerned me a little bit. I mean, I put a ton of black pepper in this cheese, so maybe it is getting too strong. I don't know. I don't want it to be too far gone before I taste it. This cheese has been being flipped about once a week and 55 degrees. There's like a little bit of white mold forming on the side right there. You can see a little bit of a dusting of it in the bag, which is fine. But overall, there's no mold. That little bit of rust is from the fridge juices. Ah. Ooh, that smells strong. It smells. It smells buttery, peppery, strong. 
is a massive cheese. I hate it when I can't get it out of the bag. Come on. Come on, baby. Dog! Come on, you can do it. Yep, I can do it. Pretty dry. It smells actually pretty neutral. Oh, it's a nice texture. It bends and then it breaks gently. It's not dry. That's lovely. I just took the cheese, no pepper that I could see in it, but I have a little bit of heat. It's buttery and creamy. That's a lot of heat, but it's nice. It has a very nice mouthfeel. It's a little bit elastic, but with a really nice chew, and it's soft at the same time. There's a sharpness to it, but it's not funky. It doesn't smack you upside the head in a pungent way. It's just a nice peppery cheese. I like it. I like it a lot. I think I'm going to continue to age this half. I'm going to cut this up into wedges. I think that's a myth we have to debunk over and over again, that when you make homemade cheeses, they're in the style of whatever cheese you're trying to follow. Like Parmesan is in the style, but I'm never going to make a Parmesan because I don't live in Parma, Italy. I can't. So this is its own thing. It's more of an Italian hard, longer aged cheese with black pepper. And it's very, very good. Yeah. I do recommend it.